p.m. on the on October 7th and we are beginning the Northampton Public Shade Tree Commission meeting. And um, can I make one, com one quick comment before yeah. I made Sue the co-host uh, because it, we're supposed to get some heavy winds shortly. Um, oh, yeah. Squall line coming through. So if I have to scout shoot out, you, got, you folks can continue and I will go out and pick up broken trees. So, <laughs> I'm here, so oh hopefully, hopefully we'll be all right. And um, we'll start with the public comment in just a moment. Um, and then after that, I'm going to ask for a motion to rearrange the agenda a little bit. We received a public comment letter from Lily Lombard. I think she sent it to everyone on the commission. And it pertains to an item further down on our agenda um, so first I'll read the letter and then I will be asking for a motion to rearrange the agenda in, so that um, Lily's input flows into um, an agenda item further down. It, it, it pertains to it. So I'll ask for that and that's up to everyone. So first I'm going to, for public comment, I'm going to read Lily's letter. Dear Tree Commissioners, it's an email received today at 1.16 p.m. Dear Tree Commissioners, please read aloud the following letter at today's meeting and include in your minutes. Thank you very much. And we have, um, Beth has a copy of this now to, to put into the minutes. She writes, City Councilor Alex Jarrett brought to my attention and sought my input regarding the mayor's proposed administrative order change affecting the Public Shade Tree Commission. I let Alex know that while I was chair, the Public Shade Tree Commission voted to recommend that it be renamed the Urban Forestry Commission to reflect our broader mission and was pleased to see that, see that recommendation forwarded by the mayor. Regarding the proposed charter change, making the tree warden ex officio chair of the commission, however, I let Alex know that one, this proposal was news to me and two, I oppose this change for the same reason I oppose the appointment of municipal staff as chair of the Energy and Sustainability Commission and Transportation and Parking Commission. To maximize its unique value to our community, the Tree Commission, as other city commissions, should operate with independence to select the independence to select its own leader to guide the commission, set agendas, and speak officially on its behalf. By design, the commission should push when needed against the perspective and will of municipal government. And it's harder to do this when a paid city employee per the charter leads the commission. I value and trust Rich as Northampton's tree warden. This is not about individual personalities or capacities. It's about how we permanently structure this city commission to benefit our community. I remind you of the unpopular stances the tree commission has taken that have, at, has taken that have at times put it at odds with city government. In my capacity as chair, I advocated in front of city council sub the city council subcommittee on legislative matters to pull the brakes on the planning department's effort to fast track changes to the ordinance pertaining to large scale ground mounted solar arrays. I also ordered, argued to the NESC on the tree commission's behalf to slow down adoption of climate resilience and regeneration plan because of its gross emission of urban forestry and other critical elements. These were tense moments. Our advocacy succeeded in large part because the Tree Commission was doggedly independent, unencumbered by mixed allegiances and had the force of concerned citizens behind it. We are at a point in history when institutions we thought we could take for granted are proving unable to withstand abuses. Our current tree warden respects power sharing and embraces the Tree Commission's mission but what about future tree wardens? What about the future mayors that hire and manage these tree wardens? Please don't willingly cede the power you currently have, the power to elect your chair. This is a permanent change that will live long beyond your tenure on the commission. Since administrative order changes can only be voted up or down by city councilors, I will be urging my councilor to vote against it. Sincerely, Lily Lombard. Was everyone able to hear me throughout? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, since we're, um, since we're reading this at the beginning is that's the only public comment we have, 
Um, I was going to make a motion to rearrange the agenda and have a discussion on this. Um, so I'm asking for a motion to change the ad next agenda item from um, reviewing the approved minutes to the mayor propose, mayor's proposed administrative order to amend public shade tree commission organizational structure. Is anyone um, interested in making a motion? I'll make a motion to change the agenda to rearrange so we're dealing with what the letter was about. I'll and second. Yeah. That's Molly. Thank you, Molly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We have to do the roll call. Roll call vote. Okay. Everything you has to be us. a roll call vote. In She's favor. Okay. Uh, Susan Lofthouse, how do you vote? In favor, please. Uh, Jen Warner. In Warner. Favor. Uh, Molly Hale. Yes. David Lukens. In favor. Robert Postel. You're muted, Robert. You're on mute. There is. You need to unmute, Rob. It's down at the bottom left corner. Or, or at the top right corner, depending. Or at the top right corner of your picture. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't even get onto the screen. I was lost. I mean, oh. I'm in trouble. How do you vote, Rob? Uh, I, I vote to change the agenda. Positive, yes. Okay. Motion passes. So it seemed to make sense to just jump right into this rather than um, splitting it up to different parts of the meeting. So we'll have a few minutes to, to discuss this. And um, I thought, um, I requested from Rich and thank you for sending me the actual order that the mayor is asking us is asking this is going to be asking the city council next Thursday to approve at a hearing. And it makes several changes to our commission. First off, it does change the name to urban forestry commission. And um, shall I share my screen? With the letter? I, I have the mayor's order. Okay, sure. Why not? So that people can see what we're talking about. Um, oops. Here it is. Can everyone see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll start off with oh, but the this official isn't... document. Oh, okay. Yeah, this isn't the letter. This is the actual ordinance. No, I think Molly, I think Lily emailed the letter to everyone and that I read the whole thing for the record. No, I mean, not the letter. asked us to. This is not and the letter. And then. I thought you were going to put up the letter from Mayor Narkowitz. Oh, are you seeing amend city of Northampton administrative code? Yes. Oops, I'm sorry. I was at the bottom. Here it is. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. So this was dated September 29. And we've all been um, received a call about this, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he's changing the name, which we've all been in support of over time. Do you want to take a minute and let everyone read it or? Um, I, it says anybody who's not read it yet? We've all read it. Okay. So it changes the number of commissioners from seven to six. And it aligns the 
Urban Shade, Urban Forestry Commission with some of the other commissions in an effort to, um, I guess, streamline administratively. Maybe Rich could speak to yeah. the intent um, and, and the benefit, you know, what the mayor is doing and how, how this administratively um, has some benefit in his eyes. Yeah, I'd like to hear that again. So from uh, speaking to uh, one of the reasons why the mayor wanted to change uh, the other two bodies from electing their chair to having a um, ex officio chair by the nature of the person's position. So for example, uh, Transportation and Parking Commission is the um, director of public works and uh, the uh, energy and sustainability is the director of planning. Um, those are multi-member bodies, which means that um, they have multiple members from different um, organizations within the city. So they have residents who serve like you. They have uh, city councilors that also serve, and they also have um, appointed uh, folks from different departments. I happen to serve on energy sustainability uh, as the, in uh, the stead of the director. So one of the um, issues is, is that um, the, those two uh, commissions potentially have had conflicts, um, whereas you'd have a city councilor because there's two city councilors per um, commission serving on them as part of their city council duties would actually be the chairperson of the commission. And when that person is the chair or anyone really is the chair and there's executive branch staff that sits on the commission, there becomes a conflict because the executive branch um, cannot be governed according to our charter by the legislative branch. So that's one, that was one of the issues. Um, I also think that it was a, you know, it was a, for, a more formal separation of the legislative and executive branches, which um, this, you know, was part of the charter change that happened, oh, I don't know, 2015, when the mayor took a lot of the commissions and one in particular that doesn't exist anymore, which is the Board of Public Works, it used to be the Public Works Commission. They actually had the, they actually had the power over the DPW budget. They set the budget, they set the water and sewer rates. Um, so they actually had, as uh, they had, power as a commission over an executive branch function, which the last charter change, which was voted upon by the citizens and approved by the state, recommended that that be changed. So that's, that is the reason um, why the mayor wants to actually, this is the, I believe the last commission that is set up separately than all those other commissions. I don't know if that answers your questions or creates more questions. Um, well, I have a question about that. Yes. Um, I understand what you're saying about why he did it for those commissions. Yes. But our commission is different because we don't have that, you know, we're all just public citizens. We're not counselors or, you know, in the government. So it seems like that rationale wouldn't apply to us. Well, in, that, in essence, it, I guess in that it, it doesn't. However, the mission of this commission, the mission, the mission of this commission, what is that song? Is this commission's mission really is a direct, is we are, including myself, we are all appointed. So we all serve at the leisure of the executive branch, wherever that may be. So next administration, none of us could be talking to each other because we might be doing different things. Hopefully not. Um, and I think that the, the other, the other issue, the other thing that I see that uh, potentially we want is actually strengthening this is the fact that the, the tree warden according to the charter is an employee of the department of public works everything that this commission does basically runs through the food chain of the department of public works meaning that i serve at the pleasure of the director i also serve as the tree warden as the director at the pleasure of the mayor but everything this commission does all the funding that happens all the projects we work on um, all the support that we have all comes directly from the DPW. So it's, it's a little odd, I think, to have a commission that is 
formulated uh, sit, sort of sitting off to the side and actually requesting of the executive branch to get X, Y, and Z done. For example, the planting plan. The planting plan is something that the commission all voted upon, right? I don't have a say in the planting plan per se. I have input, but I don't have an actual physical vote. So the planting plan was a request from all of you to actually put the planting plan together, which I had to run up through the food chain through my boss to actually fund it. And then for the mayor to actually eventually approve it. So I think that putting the tree warden, and this is kind of an odd position for me to be in a sense, I'm, I'm advocating in a sense for myself, but I'm actually advocating more so for the, for the position of tree warden, because I, I will not always be the tree warden. Someone else will be the tree warden. But I think this model actually strengthens our position as a commission. Because in essence, we all serve as an executive branch employee at the pleasure of the mayor. So no matter who is the commission chair, it doesn't really matter if the mayor does not want to take our advice or if another commission does not want to take our um, recommendations for changing some of these, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, climate resiliency and regeneration plan, it doesn't, it, doesn't, we don't have any teeth in a sense. If you follow what I'm saying? Because we all serve at the pleasure of the executive branch. If the executive branch doesn't want to endorse something, they're not, not going to do it. But you actually have, I think, a little more strength with the fact that the tree warden, who's also an employee of the DPW, and also actually is an um, executive branch employee, when the whole commission votes to actually recommend something that may be counterintuitive to the existing executive branch. The tree warden, by, by the majority vote of the commission, has to abide by what the commission has voted upon, which I think I all, I think I explained that to most of you. So I, I personally don't see there being any, I actually think this is a, a I, I think this is a better setup in a sense, because I think it strengthens and kind of solidifies the working relationship that the tree warden has with the commission. Um, from that, from that, from that perspective. Rich, thank you for being in an awkward position of kind of being in the middle of this speaking, you know, I've asked you, um, for a little bit in, of insight into, um, the impetus for this and to understand more thoroughly, like administratively how it streamlines. And I think that I'm, I'm starting to get more of an understanding of that, of the idea of streamlining the commission. Um, I think that when it comes, what I'm hearing is the actual commission serves at the pleasure of the mayor. We're each appointed by the mayor and it is in an advisory capacity. Right. And um, certainly we have, been advocating and will continue to advocate for the trees that's in our mission for the city. Um, do other people want to give some more like how you're understanding this and what your take is on it or does everyone understand? Are there questions or? I, I have something. Um, I think that uh, when I uh, talked with Rich, I think there was another piece like I understand what Lily's saying and I appreciate the input because, you know, there's a valid concern there. Um, but I think what else uh, in our conversation, Rich, I think it came up that um, it kind of uh, could help solidify the permanence of the position of tree warden in, in the city too, because you have this, um, governing body or whatever you want to call it, recommendation body that is head has to be chaired by a tree warden. So it kind of gives more in a, in a long term potential budget cuts, they couldn't, it would be harder to get rid of a tree warden, which is kind of a key to continuing the work in the city and also um, having access to grants and things like that. There's having a tree wardens, uh, you know, even though I think it's supposed to be 
by Mass General Law or something, right? Yeah. But, but so, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a tree warden before. So, you know, is, is that kind of accurate? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's very accurate. And I think that the fact of the matter is, is that the tree warden has to work in symbiosis with the commission, either with the existing setup that we have or the new setup. So I think actually, to be truthful with you, this actually might work in, 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 a, in a sense if, if, the, if, the, if for some reason down the road, none of us are commissioners and I'm no longer here, and we, we have a tree warden that does not get along with the commission, mm -hmm. the tree warden happens to be a member of the commission, the commission can vote, majority vote, to implement a certain uh, proposal, project, make recommendations to ordinance, and it goes to the mayor, if it's still the same structure, as these are the recommendations from the Public Shade Tree Commission. And if the tree warden is in the minority, then the tree warden's in the minority, and it doesn't matter. Mm. what I'm saying. So it actually, so it actually, so now the way that it is, so for example, um, the commission could vote to do something and that I could turn around presently and say to you, say to the mayor privately that I'm not interested in what the commission has just proposed. I'm not, I'm not for those recommendations. It's almost like a set of checks and balances in, in kind of a strange way. And I, that's the best. Oh, here comes the rain. <laughs> There's, yes, I, I've been, oh. I've talked um, over time to people, citizens involved in tree work in a variety of different communities. And what really stands out in Northampton, and one of the reasons I think we've been recognized so much, is the close coordination between the tree warden, DPW, citizens, and the government. And um, I think that having the citizens working with the tree warden is a, really a key to our success. And respecting the tree warden as a professional position and somebody who is ultimately legally responsible for all the trees um having having the tree warden as an essential part of the commission that is consistent with what has made us very strong there are plenty of places where the tree warden does not interact with the citizens and they try to get things done and it's very, very difficult without them all working, you know, together with citizens. So I, I know that that is the case in some towns where the DPW and tree warden just do their thing. <laughs> so having it codified that the tree warden works, warden works with the citizens is a plus. And I do acknowledge Lily's you know, concerns that citizens wouldn't have voice, but as Rich has noted, there would be the scenario where the citizens would just either go away, you know, not want to participate, or they would be in a position where they were voting to support policies that were remained in defiance of whatever mayor may be in power and whatever tree warden may be working on the commission. Yes, I, I want to just reinforce that idea, partly, partly a question, but just thinking it through, it's kind of a reinforcement of what you just said, is that it doesn't prevent us as a commission from voting. And even if our, uh, our, our opinions vary with the tree commission, the tree warden, they would still be presented to the, to the, to the mayor. And in other words, it doesn't, this doesn't stop us from having a, our independent voice as, a, as commission members, I think. In other words, the chair doesn't get to decide what, what's presented. Oh, it's kind of getting stormy, huh? Yeah, there's hail here on Stoddard. <laughs> is Rich still there or is he out cutting down trees now? He's I have here. one view of sunny sky and one view of total darkness. <laughs> oh, we've got stuff blowing around outside here. Sorry, I got a little distracted there. Um, I think that we all, each of us can also 
um, speak out individually on this. Um, we can people hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so I was just saying that as a commission, we still get to speak independently. The the, the tree warden will only be one of seven vote votes actually. Six, six citizen commissioners and a tree warden, main seven. So we're, we are not um, censored or, or edited by this move, I think, I believe. Does any, would, does anyone wish to speak further on this matter and this in, um, initiative by our mayor? I, I would just uh, like to briefly say that to, to Rob's point about independence, I think um, in the uh, transmittal letter that Mayor Narkowitz wrote to recommend the uh, um, administrative changes in 2014, he talked about, he says about the Public Shade Tree Commission, uh, the tree committee has been renamed the Public Shade Tree Commission to better reflect both state terminology and its independent role advising our tree warden. So I would, I think that if there are, that provided the commission's independence isn't clipped, then it's, it sounds like a reasonable change. But I would be uh, concerned, I guess, if the uh, commission's independence was infringed by the proposed role. Um, my power went out right as Rob was starting to talk. Did you guys' power go out too? Um, anyway, only, only for a moment. I didn't get to hear what Rob said. Okay, um, I'll, I'll just, just give me repeat the it. And I think um, David kind of elaborated on it. And I just wanted to—it's partly a question, but I think I understand that our ability as a commission to convey our majority opinion would still be intact if we disagree with the tree commission, the tree warden, he would still be obligated to bring the, the, the view of the commission uh, to uh, the mayor. So it's not like we're um, unable to express our, our uh, opinion. Um, and it is just an opinion because we don't really have a power, and I think that um, the idea that we're losing power. Now, I think we may have just lost Rich because he went yeah. dark. I think we should just wait because um, looks like David. David, are you there? Yeah, Beth was off for a second. Yeah, I'm. I'm here still. We don't have Jen. We don't have Rich. Can we just hold off for a second and see if they can yeah. get back on? Yeah, and I want to look out the window because it's kind of exciting. <laughs> <laughs> right. It might have just passed. I think it might be over. Oh, really? Well. Might be over, huh? Yeah. At Rich least in texted, part. Rich texted that he lost his, his Zoom connection. Yeah. A, I can look. I don't think it's over today. I can look on my um, phone. Yeah, see. I lost my I lost my internet connection, so I had to like um turn back on my internet and then get back into the meeting. It just took a few minutes. Beth, are you there? You look frozen. She's frozen. So I don't know if Beth is hearing us either right now. Yeah, I think Susan, Sue is frozen. Oh, Sue's frozen. Wow, it's like zombies. It's so weird. It's like, who's real and who's not real? <laughs> I think, and now Rob's frozen too. So it's just I know, I know. It's like, yeah. it's a weird reality. Okay, David, it's you and me. <laughs> <laughs> We're the only ones left on earth. The rest have turned into zombies. <laughs> No, I am curious. So what happens to the quorum um, if something like this happens? Yeah, we lose our quorum, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay, here comes Beth. Uh oh, my lights are flickering again. I might. Uh oh, now David's a zombie. Oh no. I'm the only one left. Oh my God. Oh, so weird.
Okay, Beth. It's down to you and me for the moment. Yeah, it looks like I came back. <laughs> it, was, it was me and David for a minute. Everybody else had turned into frozen zombies, and now it's you and me. Yeah, first they turn into frozen zombies, and then I get disconnected. <laughs> yeah. It just hit here big time, which Where it hadn't look? before. East Where? Hampton. East Hampton, oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, because now it's just, it's still nice on that side, but it's oh, really? pouring over there. Wow. And oh, very windy, but no hail yet. Yeah, no hail. Except we lost power and internet, but I got back in. Yeah, we were just saying we should just wait till everybody comes back because yep. there's no point having the conversation with only a few of us. Absolutely. And where else do, where do you guys live? I'm in Florence, right near where Rich is, on Oak Street. But he's totally gone. He's gone, yeah. But He said, he said yeah. you're on your own. He texted me. Oh, he did? Yeah. Because you're um, the co-host. Yes. Now, Beth, now you're the host. Well, that's too bad, since this is such an important issue. It is. Beth, where are you? I'm in East Hampton. Ah. And you, Sue? And you, Susan? Um, Stoddard Street in Northampton, which is behind Stop and Shop, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Right. Um, the bike trail is at the end of the street, and then at the top of our street is Prospect and Round Hill Road. Round Hill, yep. That area. Hmm. Hmm. I hope everybody's okay. I'm sure they're okay. It's just a no power. Mm. Right, except trees could fall upon one. Well, that's true. That's one's true. House, whatever. That is true. Rich sent along a New York Times article from today that was quite interesting about the aging canopy in New England. There was a guest from a prior meeting, Christina Bizanson, is featured in the article. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Does that basically mean that the trees in the canopy are mature and therefore more at more likely to fall? Is that the basic idea? Or? Yeah, that's when you said that. That's what I I thought of. Um, I didn't finish the whole thing. Let's see. It says it talks about the different how you know you can look at new england and there's all these trees but it's what's really true though is that they're stressed by drought and then intensive rain and rising temperatures extreme weather um and a lot of different kinds of pests are coming in and there's a severe shortage of of um arborists going oh, really? forward there aren't enough arborists and there's all these trees that are decaying Oh, huh. Yeah. And um, a lot of stressed out trees. It ends with, you know, um, that their, their crews are booked months in advance and their equipment, you know, they don't have, there's not enough equipment and people to deal with all of the problems our trees are having in New England. And a lot of increasingly it's pests, but also the weather and the, the fact that our trees starts off talking about how they were, you know, first cut down by the first colonists. And then there was a second wave in the industrial revolution where they chopped down all the trees and now they've grown back, but there's a high level of maturity in our forests, old trees. Which... Well, they're not actually old growth trees. The majority of the trees in our forests are kind of, um, they're, they're mature, like as far as economically mature, but they're not biologically mature. Uh. Yeah, they're more like, um, you know, trees that are like eight to um, 18 inches. That's sort of like this. It's not like there's lots of trees that are like 24 inches and more. So when was the last time that New England was clear cut, Molly? It was back in the 1840s when the, um, when sheep farming became really popular. That's when people started clearing um, clearing 
way, way, way more land and building all those stone walls. Mm. Yeah, there was an interesting bit of history. It's all detailed in Tom Wessel's book called Reading the Forested Landscape. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I read that years ago. Yeah, Napoleon in France, um, there was a war and uh, Portugal had these sheep, merino sheep that make that soft, non-itchy merino wool. And, but they had a ban, like they weren't, um, there was an embargo on Portugal, so nobody could get those sheep. But then Nap there was a war that Napoleon was in and he won and um, therefore the embargo ended. So people, those sheep could be exported. And it just so happened that the US ambassador to um, Portugal was a guy in New Hampshire and he was the one who brought over the first merino sheep and started and and it started this whole like uh what would you call it it went viral it went viral <laughs> a craze <laughs> yeah it became a craze and everybody wanted to grow sheep because before like all you know everybody wore woolen there was no cotton clothing people wore wool clothes but they were really itchy so you can imagine that like to have wool that wasn't itchy was like this huge deal Oh, that's yeah. what made it special. Right. So everybody wanted to raise these special sheep. And so people went crazy um, clearing land and, and the populations of the towns were huge, like 10 times, like the hill towns, you know, were 10 times more population than they are now. Um, yeah. And then, you know, all those old schoolhouses and stuff that are abandoned, those little schoolhouses yeah. um, reflect that. But they built all the, they did all that clearing and um, built all those stone walls. And this whole thing only lasted for a few decades because it soon became apparent that because New England soil is so glacial, it has all this glacial till, it's really rocky and poor nutrition. And um, it just couldn't support the sheep. And there was all this overgrazing. And at that same time, the um, Erie Canal was finished and people were able to travel west and where it was not glaciated, like in the middle, the Midwest, it's really good soil. So everybody just went there. And as well, the cotton gin was invented. And so um, cotton suddenly became the big boom and wool was, you know, not as important anymore. So all these factors made it um, like people just abandoned their farms and moved elsewhere. And, and the farms started to grow back. Um, so that's why like all those trees, like the majority of our forest now are second growth after that um, first grow back after the sheep. After the sheep. So second growth since the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. So does maturity and, of the tree, uh, like biolog did you call it biological maturity? Yeah. That, so that has to do with the, the girth rather than well, a lot height, of or? trees yeah um trees can live really long time like oaks and hemlocks and pines they can live hundreds of years mm -hmm. and get to be really huge but they're not perfect condition they might have defects you know so by the time a tree is like 18 inches diameter it's in the size class it's like the highest grade and as long as it's um doesn't have like defects on it it can get bigger and bigger and it doesn't really change the grade. It's still grade one. Unmute. So now Beth is I gone. Am... I'm back. Are we the last two standing here? Well, I've already been, I've been the last two standing with David, then David disappeared and Beth came back and I was the last two standing with her. 
now she's gone and I'm last standing with you. So I assume the other ones are trying to reconnect, but I haven't seen Jen in a long time or Rob. Yeah. Um, so let's just hang in there. Anyway, we'll isn't hang that, here. About that, that history? Um, it so is. At the time um, of all that clearing, it was 80% open and only 20% forested, Massachusetts was. Oh my goodness. Now it's completely reversed. It's only 20% forested and 80% either open or developed. Oh wait, it, now it's how much percent? Wait, now it's 80% forested. Yeah, it, wait, it's 80% forested, yes. 80% forested. And 20% non-forest. I guess maybe they're talking about non-urban areas. Yeah, because when you look at those drought mass maps of Massachusetts and you see the eastern part, it just looks like it's all developed. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know how it balances out when you factor in other parts of New England. I mean, you put Maine in there, I suppose. That's yeah, I don't know how they count, like if they're only counting, in that statistic, if they're only counting um, non-developed land. I assume that's it. Right. Farmland and forest. Hey, Molly, we could have a side conversation. I did go out with one of the maps. Okay. We could talk about that. That would be okay. sure. legal. Mm -hmm. I'm back. Hey, Hello, welcome back. Welcome the back. <laughs> Yeah, I missed the rest of that conversation. Did you guys stay the whole time? I mean, you were both there. No, I got cut out too. I had to come I back. I was gone and I came back. The only last thing I said was that back when the maximum um, clearing happened for the sheep, um, the land was 80% cleared and only 20% forested. Mm. Compared to now where it's the opposite, where the land is 80% forested and 20% cleared. And that's why certain animals have come back like Fisher, and moose and um, um, what are the other ones? Um, I forget, there's certain species that need, oh yeah, fisher moose. I'm forgetting a main one, but that they need the forest. But I can't believe things, how much you remember and you know, it's very well, impressive. It's, just, it's so interesting, yeah. Yeah. You, right before I vanished, you were saying that a tree could still be a one, oh, a right. great yeah, yeah. one, because if it's if it's healthy and right for eighteen inches, was that it? Yeah. What's, it, what's the grade? Does the grade have to do with lumbering issues? Or? Yes. If you're cutting it for timber, the value of the tree has to do with its its grade, which is a combination of size and um, how many de how much defect it has. So if you have a perfect tree, like with no knots on any of the four sides and it's over 18 inches, then it's a grade one. <clears throat> but if it has a defect- a perfect tree, the first thing we want to do is think about how we can cut it down, huh? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> That's why I talk about economic maturity. But, okay. um, but in terms of biological maturity, um, trees can live hundreds of years, but they may not be perfect. They may have rot in some spots or bends or um, you know, a branch that fell off and left a hole or something like that but they can last hundreds of years. And then, and then even after they finally fall, um, they last hundreds of years on the ground, if they're really big, or a hundred anyway, and um, provide really great habitat on the ground. So if they, they have a defect, so probably no one's cut them down for, for economic reasons, do they just, will they keep getting what is it more girth what's that there's a better term for that yeah yeah, yeah. diameter mm -hmm. diameter okay yeah, yeah they'll keep growing certain species you know can grow especially like um oaks and pines and hemlocks can grow really really big um but even you know maples they can be 30 40 inches diameter the book you mentioned by tom wessels mm -hmm. um one of the things i remember i read it really really long time ago you were bringing it back but there were these wonderful illustrations in it, artist illustrations of the scale of a human being in what the forest would have looked like pre-colonization. Mm -hmm. When the pines were 400 years old. Yeah. And it shows this tiny little person. It looks like 
it reminds me of like the redwood forest or something the scale yeah. of people tree that that this landscape had enormous trees I, the original um old growth forest that was here you know when the native Amer when the native <laughs> americans lived here um the um pines um as soon as um settlers came over um king george i guess he was yeah the british king um, he wanted all those big pines to make masts for his ships, for his Navy. And so um, he had people mark, they put the mark of the king, I forget, some kind of like insignia on the tree saying, this is the property of the king. And, you know, it's illegal to cut it because it belongs to the king. They just went, went and marked all these trees for the king. And then they cut them down and, you know, made them lumber for ships for the king. So all these huge trees were cut, you know, for the king's timber. For the empire. Yes, right. Yeah, colonial empires. Yeah. And it now has occurred to me, oh, go ahead. Oh no, you talk Beth. No, I was just gonna say, um, in terms of legalities, does anyone know what's supposed to be done in this situation where we've lost half the commission and the rest of us are chatting happily? Oh, well, okay. I think We're we would say, recording. I think we should say there was a pause in the meeting. The meeting like temporarily ended at whatever time that first power outage was. Right, which I didn't record, but, um, um, and then because I think we can, I think you can edit the, the Zoom meeting, but I'm not sure how that, how the ethics yeah. of that work. I can check, Rich said you're on your own. Let's what see. about anybody else? 458 was about when he disappeared and then gradually everyone else disappeared. Hmm. So basically and, by five o'clock and now it's 520 course, we've been waiting. We can't get emails from them because their power's out, presumably. Yeah. Or their, I, or their I, internet. I have the texts for a few of them who, who actually do tree planting. Mm -hmm. So I could do that. Um, yeah, but do they have text service? They, they, they won't have Wi-Fi. Oh, but maybe they can get it through their phone. Their phone. So Jen Werner. Okay. Hi, Jen. Are you able to rejoin? The meeting. Yeah, I hated to interrupt the conversation because I was enjoying it, but I just <laughs> I thought know. perhaps we should. <laughs> well, we think. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have contact with any of the other people, Sue? And their con like their phone numbers, David or um, Rob. I have Rob. And also, whatever happened to Marilyn? Did she say she wasn't going to be able to come? I didn't hear from her. Huh. Okay. Well, I can. Jen has no power, so oh. she's not an option. Mm. We need a phone list here. Um, I have a phone list, actually. You do? Yeah, but I don't think I have David's number. Let's see. It's a little one. Let's see. I have got, um, it's very old. It has Jay still on it and Todd Ford. Um, Let's see, I've got Rob. I could try calling Rob. Do you want to try I calling guess. Marilyn? Sure. Okay, her number is 617-576-0810. Was she ever in the meeting? No. No. But I guess it's probably not too late. Because we don't have a quorum right now. Yeah, I know. I don't know what the legality of that is. Well, I feel like for this issue, we should definitely reach out to everyone. But the problem is it's bummer because it's a time sensitive because isn't it going to go before the city council pretty soon? We didn't have a vote scheduled on it or anything like that. It would just be a matter of individuals if they wanted to talk to their city councilors. But I thought, didn't the mayor's letter say it was going to go? Or maybe there wasn't a certain date. Well, 
I called Lily and asked her and thanked her for her input and told mm -hmm. her and confirmed we'd be doing, we I would read it and uh -huh. we'd have a conversation. And she said it's at, on Thursday. Oh, so I'm saying it's really soon. So it's a bummer because it would really be nice to know, like figure out where the members of the tree commission stand on this um, before that meeting. And well, yet, I think it's up to us to talk to our city councilors as individuals. Yeah. As individuals. But I still, it's too bad because I think the discussion amongst us is useful, you know, prior to that. As um, advisory. For me, it's, it's useful to hear what the different perspectives are to, to weigh it out. I'll try calling Rob. Yeah. Okay, you try Rob, and I'm going to look for David Lucan's phone number. Okay. I think I might have it in my email. All right, I'm going to mute myself for a minute. Sue, Rob says he probably has David's phone number. Lucan's. Oh, perfect. Yeah, let me know. Let me know what it is, Rob, and I'll tell Sue. Marilyn did not pick up. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, Sue, here's David's number. Okay. 908-328-1435. Okay. Thanks, Rob. So do you want to come back, Rob? I mean, come back. We want you back. <laughs> well, if we get enough people back, we could resume the meeting. Yes, but why don't you join us and we'll see if we can get the critical mass assembled. Okay. See you soon. Bye. Rob's coming. What is a quorum? How, much, how many people? Um, I think it's four. Well, let's see. There's supposed to be seven members, right? Right, um, but one is vacant. Does that matter? No, it just means we still have to have a four-person quorum. That's the problem with having a vacancy because it makes it harder to get harder. a quorum. Yeah. Jen said she'd let us know if her power comes back on. And mm -hmm. I'm saying, okay, we have two and are waiting to see if anyone can come back. Okay. Well, if we can get David back, then we would have a quorum. Okay, calling him now. Okay. There's Rob. Um, okay. Here. There you go, Rob. Here. Well, Rob, you missed a very interesting conversation about the history of the landscape history of Massachusetts. You did. Oh, the how landscape. How did we get on that topic? We were talking history. about, I don't remember how we got on that topic, but. You mean how it was trees and then it was fields? Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And because of sheep, all because of sheep. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot about the sheep in Vermont and New Hampshire in particular. Yeah, same, same thing happened here. Yeah, in there it was only slightly different in that the land there is more terrible, and there was more no terrible. Reason, yeah, <laughs> no right. reason, to, no reason to be there, and, and um, except for the, the it was merino wool, merino, am I right? Merino, yeah, merino. Yeah, merino wool, and that um, pushed people into these far reaches. Yeah, and that was, and then 
And then the railroad got built up there too. That was the yeah. next. And, yeah, and that's was, right. And the, was, the railroad and the Erie Canal too. Excessive capital. No one knew what to do with money. So they built these railroads thinking there'd be huge returns. And it turned out the railroads really went to a land that was not productive and no one really wanted it. And so they um, now make bike trails out of it and stuff. It's great. Like it goes uh, up to Jamaica, Vermont, and it went all the way to Washington, New Hampshire, and all over the place. These little, but, they were little light gauge railroads. But they also had railroad that was built to the west so that people yeah. moved from here to the west where the pastures right. were greener, yes. more fertile. Yeah. But they spent a lot of money building out of infrastructure here. People just endlessly had hope. And actually, the COVID yeah. has given them new hope because now a lot of city people are moving. Like I was in Vermont this weekend. The most common car in the parking lot is like a $70,000 Tesla now. Oh, because, really? Oh. Well, because people have, have left to put their kids in school up there. And stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. Ever changing. Ever changing. So, did you reach David? Oh, no. No, no. no Susan's happy. She's a zombie now. Oh, she's back. She's back. Did you reach David? I left a message. Oh. He didn't pick up. Hmm. My, my loss of power was very minimal, just for a little while. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, did, everyone too. Get, did everyone get the article about um, the need for more, more arborists um, that in, involved um, our very own Christina, who is- Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that. Oh, you saw that, all, you all saw that, right? Yeah, Sue mentioned that too. I yeah. tried to describe it, and that's how we got into talking about the forests of New England. Oh, that was how. Oh, that's great. And um, yeah, the basic gist was, they're gonna need a lot more arborists going forward. Yeah. And there aren't and Is enough. that not an appealing uh, vocation for people these days? Is it too dangerous or too low pay or? It seems like a well, good. I go to the tree warden meetings and at the tree warden meetings, there's a constant comment that it's a good job. It's an interesting job and not enough people are trying to enter the, the, the labor force in that way. And hmm. Jen repeats that also that she, she's not an arborist, but she's a landscape design build. Whatever. And she, she just says there's openings, there's jobs. Um, she taught at a technical college. The class was like half empty and yet all the graduates get jobs. So it's just, there's just a disconnect between. Well, you know, it might be the whole thing of um, people are going into these really um, digital computer type jobs oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, or they're going into like, um, you know, people who go to the elite colleges and universities want things like doing research in a lab or, you know, Definitely. being a doctor, lawyer, business person, whatever. And arborist is sort of in the same category in a way as like plumber or electrician. It's not really, but it's, yeah. it's more hands-on and it's not like the kind of thing that millennials generally gravitate towards, I think. Right. Well, one other thing I observe at the tree is that, you know, it's a, it's a meeting where like a, a few hundred tree wardens come together and, and other professionals. And by the way, the two women that were mentioned in the article, they're always there too. Um, as not as wardens, but as technical information, is that the, the, the lead, the, there's the vast majority of the people in the room are, are men, many of them quite brawny. Mm. But almost all of the um, like information, science, uh, leadership positions are women. That's so, interesting. So, I mean, we have a, there, someone comes and presents the law in relation to tree M MGS, MG87. That's a woman. Um, s climbing s safety, you know, that might be a woman. All kinds of etymologists. On, it's kind of on and on, actually. And of course, yeah. Molly, Molly, um, whose last name I have trouble Freiliker. with. Freilicher. Freilicher. Yeah. Freilicher, yes. Another woman. Yeah, there are a lot of them. So it's kind of cool that their women are moving into the field. Yeah, that's a lot. interesting. A lot. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. I think the field would do better if it weren't um, just men. I'm wondering for this meeting, is it possible for us to um, 
like have it next week to make up for this one? Or do we have to um, stick to the regular, you know, Beth, do you know the rules about that? Like, do we have to have a certain amount of um, lead time for when a meeting is going to be? Or is it impossible to schedule it at a time that's not the regular time? Well, my understanding is that an agenda has to be published 24, 48 hours ahead. Uh -huh. But otherwise, I'm not aware, but I'm, I'm, I really don't know that much about it. But I know the TPC, which I've you know, been been going to for a while. They've, I believe, they've made changes because there was a they were they were polling everybody about whether to meet on like Wednesday or Tuesday. You know, because Tuesday's the normal time, but it's just once a month. But there was mm -hmm. some conflict, so they were considering doing it even on a different day. So I, my sense is that you might be able to, but I, I don't really know. I'm not the person to ask. But it sounds like we also need a technical support. Um, person yourself to enable us to have meetings. Well, someone. you do, or someone else has to take the take the um, the minutes. I mean, somebody has to take them. It doesn't have to be me. Well, um, so I think what you should do. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to continue it today. Um, I think you should contact Rich we've tomorrow done. and um, and figure out what to do about rescheduling this meeting. Have we tried to call Rich? He said you're on your own in a text. Oh, you're on your own. So I'll try to give him a call. That means okay. he to go he's got trees see. down. Probably. Yeah, just call him and see what's up and then tell him that we only have three. We don't have a quorum and we can't continue. Yeah, we, yeah. we're holding up Beth's evening and all of our. No, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> we were supposed to be here till six, so oh. right. We'll yeah, see if it picks up. Oh, see, hey, now hey, here in East Hampton uh, City Council, we, they just canceled the city council. We get more than um, three commissioners on. We've tried calling everybody. So we're going to shut it down and um, hopefully maybe we could reschedule. Okay, how about us? Um, start with you in the morning and oh dear I'm sorry to hear that um, what got struck by lightning oh dear oh oh my goodness well um how about if I get in touch with you after nine tomorrow morning? And I'll do a poll with the commissioners. Thank you. Good. Be safe. Not at all. We, we gave it a, we tried to get enough people. We don't have them. So, okay. Thanks. Bye. What Hi everyone. Apparently there was a lightning strike at the firehouse on Carlin. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, he says there's trees down all over. It's a big mess in some parts oh. of the city. Oh, man. Um, I'll call him in the morning and get it uh, re reschedule time because we should have him included in it and then do a poll. I'll get a number of times from him and do a poll with everyone. Um, uh, I'll just tell you, I'm leaving tomorrow morning for six days. Oh, so my goodness. I'll be back on Wednesday. You know, I'll be back if we want to do it next Wednesday. I could do it then, but I won't be here. Call has been forwarded to an automated. See, and I also am okay. having, I'm on vacation starting tomorrow morning well, and coming back on Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. But I think Wednesday is possible for me. I can check that right now if, if you want. But I just wanted to also say that East Hampton. Hey, that would be great. Old. Wait, hold on. What was Beth saying? East Hampton was ca uh, canceled its city council meeting tonight due to power outages and rescheduled it to October 14th. Ah. So, you know, it, I mean, I'm saying that we can, but I, but Rich or Laura Crutzler would be probably the ones that know that. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. What were you going to say, Susan? Okay. 
Um, next Wednesday, Beth is back. You're back. Rit, Rob, are you around next Wednesday? Yeah, that's a planting day, but I'll be done by then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to close down the meeting. Hey, wait, um, wait. I have Jen on the phone. Hi, Jen. Oh. Hi, Rob. Uh, do you, are you at leisure to dial back in if you wanted to, or? Well, yeah, if you come rejoin the meeting, we would have four and we could finish out the meeting, which might be good. I'm looking. Um, okay, how, how do I dial back in? You just go back to the agenda and just the same way you got there the uh, first. I can't get on the agenda because I. Oh, I'll read. The internet. Oh. I can read the number. No, apparently she doesn't have internet. Jen, Jen, I know, but, but she, she could dial in with her phone, with the phone yeah. number. We know, we know a lot of hardware. Oh, so they're they're offering you that you dial in with your phone. Right, but what do I how do I do that? Okay, 301. Wait. But what number do I dial in? You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, listen to Susan right now. Okay. 301. Hold on. 301. 715. Eight five nine two. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna relay it instead of um, Susan doing it. So start again, Susan. Okay. Okay. Right. Start again. Okay. Three zero one. Three zero one. Seven one five. Eight five nine two. Eight five nine two. All right. I'll call in. Thank you. The password. Right. Oh wait, wait. There's a password. Oh, password. Okay. We'll go ahead and dial in, and then when you're there, we'll, well give you the password. Just tell her what the password is. Okay. What is the password? Jot this down. Four zero four one three three. Oh, you got to you got to write the password down. I thought it would be like tree or something. How's six digits? I got to do what? You ready for the password? You have to write it down. I am. Okay. I'm what's ready. Sue? Four zero four one three three. Four zero four one three three. Okay. I got it. It's, okay, give it a try. There's there's a meeting ID too. Okay. Great. Yeah. He's gone. Wow. Susan, you've mastered all the technology here. <laughs> oh, you're too and kind. Uh, you got it. Well, you're able to post. I'm very impressed. You're able to put stuff up on the screen, like text. Oh, oh yeah. Well, it's easy if you're the easy if you're the convener. Yeah. When you when I was having trouble getting rid of the mute, I had multiple uh, monitors open. Oh. Two monitor in the back there, and I couldn't even get my little arrow to go back in and punch that. So I was like, <laughs> I have trouble controlling my technology. It's like, oh my god. Apparently, the host controls who can share their screen. Right, right. Well, Sue might dial in. I mean, it's probably better to have the meeting finished than try and reschedule it. Don't you think? This is better. Yeah, as Molly pointed out, we were right in a you know an important conversation and. Jen's teaching high school, so she probably, I think, probably ready to finish early. Yeah, I think she was, um, she said four days in person. Oh, she's had four in person days. Uh -huh. Oh, now she needs the meeting ID. She just texted. All right, I can give her that. You, oh, we're going to give it to her over the phone? I'm going to text her. Oh, you're gonna text her? Yeah. Okay. Nine, six, Good. nine, one, six, seven, oh, three, oh, five, two, three, 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 one, six, nine, one, six, seven, oh, three, oh, five, two. Fingers crossed. Will she appear? 
-hmm. Well, her phone. <laughs> a little black box with her name. Yeah. Oh, oh it won't be a video connection? Mm -mm. No, it'll just be a black box with a little phone symbol on it. Cool. It is nice that they give you that option too. Yeah. Because some people don't have a connection mm. ever or not a stable one. So. Mm -hmm. Come on. Our internet stopped before half an hour before the meeting. Our internet completely stopped and had to be reset, which doesn't house? happen. But yeah, it doesn't happen very often. But I thought, well, I guess I'll call in if if all else fails. Molly, are you are you traveling somewhere interesting? Yeah, I'm going up to Lake Champlain for a oh. Yeah. October is a nice time to be up there. Yeah, it will be. Pretty cold, though. Mm, it can be, but not necessarily. Is there a place you go back to? Or yeah, we have a cottage up there. Ah. Yeah. And my son's going to be up there, too, so that'll be good to see him. Very nice. Come on, Jen, we're rooting for you. <laughs> I wonder what's happening. Yeah, that's, what is the meeting ID? And I sent that, let me double check it. 969-1670. Could she be in the waiting room? Yeah, do you have to let her in? Oh. Oh, go to participants. Oh. I don't see her. Um, did you, you clicked on participants? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't see her listed either. But then. I don't know that we would see her because it's. Right. But Sue doesn't see her either. I know. I should be able to let her in. There she is. There she is. There she is. Okay. Yes. I think I'm there. Woohoo! Ooh, wow. wow, thank you. That thank was you worth it just to see if we could do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here I okay, am. Okay, it, it's 546 and we have a quorum, so we're officially meeting again. Awesome. All right, so let's see. There was a thing I wrote down. The meeting uh, uh, unfortunately adjourned with David talking about um, Rob's point about independence and the mayor's letter. He was he was concerned about whether the commission's role as it is now would be infringed upon. That was his only concern. Whether it would lose independence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Somehow the conversation at that point came back to me. Because right I said I, I had missed what you said because I had a blackout while you were talking. Ah, and so we went back I to what you answered were saying. Molly by saying that as a group, the um, commissioners would still vote, and our whatever we um, recommended would still be presented, even if it weren't what the chair right. uh, proposed. So, one, one thing that would change, well, go finish what you were gonna say, Rob. So, so our, our loss of power is limited in that way, a limited loss in that we're not the ones, that, it wouldn't be one of us, one of the citizens presenting as the chair, but the view wouldn't change. In other words, the view of the majority would still be the view of the majority. One thing that, one thing that would one thing that would change is that the um, chair, the chair is the one who sets the agenda for the meetings too, and the, you know the time allotted for each item and all that. So there's a certain amount of control that comes with that. Right. That would be right. lost. Right. And at the same the, time, as commissioners, we're allowed to um, ask 
ask for, and I think even at some point require that any one of us as a group or as a group, we can influence the agenda. In other words, every time Lily made an agenda, she would send out something saying, she's making up the agenda, do you have anything to put on? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, so, yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to picture the worst possible case scenario. If there was a tree commissioner who was, for some reason, um, against, you know, some of the things that we were for, because maybe he was aligned with a mayor who was really not that into trees. And so he picked a, a warden who was really not very effective. Yep. You know, in so, that kind of scenario, um, how would that influence, you know? I, I think we have a good picture of what that would be like in the um in the past uh when there was a free committee wait hold on a second jen oh thank you she i muted, muted her thank in you the past, when there was a tree committee uh the the tree committee didn't get along that well with the dpw right they, right. they weren't interested in communicating yeah and so the tree um committee really had no power because they couldn't uh, make mm -hmm. things happen, whereas the DPW could or could not make things happen. Right. And so in a way that is a, a danger, except that it's really only by the cooperation of, I mean, I think of whenever I, I'm hoping something would happen, I'm hoping that Rich will want to do it and then Donna will want to do it and then the mayor will want to do it. Otherwise, whatever I want, I know isn't good, about to happen. So I think it's the same situation. So if we would be back to where we were, where um, if we don't, uh, if we're not aligned in an agreement, it would be, it would be impossible for us to, to actually affect any, any kind of, um, yeah. affect any plan. But, but I think that's true now. I think that's true now. Well, our, our recommendation, if, if we, the commission voted unanimously or majority to um, do something that the, that the tree warden didn't want, it would bypass the warden and go to the mayor, right? Right. So. But that's still true. In other words, we yeah. can still bypass the, we can still, the, just because he's the, the chair doesn't mean he can prevent us from expressing whatever we want. I, I have a question. What are some examples of things that we have done that have had to get approved by the mayor specifically? Like our planting plan, like that document that we made out that says what our priorities are and that kind of thing. Does that go to the mayor? Oh, I'm having a dog problem. Yeah. I'm just chewing on it. <laughs> You're muted, Rob. Oops, I muted him for a second. No, let me see. Oh, there. So I think that it does go like when we make a plant, when we ask to plant a bunch of trees, like we want to plant 200 trees. That goes to Donna first, the DPW, and then from Donna to the mayor, I believe. Or also, also if we're trying to publicize something or. Uh, press release, all that stuff has to go through the mayor. Exactly. <laughs> Already, in other words, we can't, as a commission, say it, make a statement without it going through. The right. Mayor. Jen's correct. I think when I first started coming to commission meetings, I was um, for a while. I thought the commission had some powers, but then the more I learned is that we can't speak out now without the mayor approving anything we say. Although as individuals we can. As individuals we can. Right. And I suppose it gives status and weight to some things we say because we are associated with the commission. Mm. And um, as a commission, um, for instance, Carolyn has come to us and Carolyn Mission asked for a recommendation on on, for instance, the, the solar installations. 
And we spent right. considerable time and um, expertise from Molly and Jen in particular informed the way we were able to, we were able to put some influence on how, how things were being written and policy was made. So we get, I see our power as in, um, we're strongest when we're collaborating. When we have a really strong relationship with our tree warden and the DPW and with the other departments. I think that's actually really, when we, we make progress and we've come a long way. I think that's really a key point. When we collaborate, we make progress. I guess on the flip side, if we're not collaborating, there's no power that we would have by having a powerful chair that would help us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if, they're, if we're not working with the DPW and the mayor, uh, nothing gets done. Yeah. And what I was trying to articulate was talking to tree volunteers who don't have any official contact with the DPW or the tree warden are just flung out into the ether. There's very little they can do. And having, you know, a tree warden and who we have access to on a regular basis is very good. And I don't believe that there's anything in the current charter that that requires a tree warden to deal with the people. You mean the volunteer hmm. effort, right? The volunteers, yeah. A lot of DPWs don't want to have anything to do with volunteers. Yes. It, it, and we, we have that. Yeah, and, and of course that's hmm. not in any kind of statu statute or required and whether he's the chair or not the chair. It's just, uh, we're just lucky that the DPW and volunteers work well together. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of an intricate dance, but it, you know, it's to, because there's a union and how the union feels about the work we do and all that and is into it. Right, right. But I, yeah. Hmm. So does it seem and like- I understand. Does it, does it seem like essentially um, it wouldn't really change anything because even as it is now, any recommendation we make has to go through the tree warden to the mayor. The only difference would be, it would still have to go to the mayor, but it's possible that if the tree warden didn't like it, um, well, even as it is now, if Rich didn't like something that we wanted, he would still have to send the recommendation to the mayor, right? Even as it is now? Yes, 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 as it is now and as it would be if the commission recommends something, that would still right. reach the mayor, as I understand it. I mean, Rich doesn't have... Because, because it's a majority, you know, it's, it's a majority vote on right. whatever it is. If, if the tree, tree warden doesn't agree and the other six people are, you, you know, do agree and say, hey, we want this he can, the, he or she, the tree commission, uh, tree, oh, sorry, tree warden could say to the mayor, it's unanimous or whatever, there's a majority that agree, you know, I was a negative vote, but that would be reflected in the um, minutes anyway. Right. I, I think though, w one thing that I'm a little confused about is, well, I'm not really confused, is it in the past, it seems to me that mainly the main avenue of communication was the commission. Rich would get, you know, find out what we had decided, and then that would go to Donna and the mayor. But at times, Lily would speak directly occasionally to different people in the city and say, I'm the chairman and I'm representing mm -hmm. the commission. That's true. I'm assuming that at least under Rick, with Rich present, that the role of the vice chair would become a little more active because Rich isn't going to always want to be the, I assume just knowing him, the only one that's speaking for the commission, um, for instance, to the planning commission and whatnot. I'm not sure. Yeah, and I also, I also asked him about kind of whether if he had to become chair, whether he could carry out the duties of the chair as they stand now, or just not because I don't think he 
you know, wants to or whatever, but let's get real about his time yeah. commitment, you know? Yeah. So we had a part of the discussion I had with him was that the vice chair potentially would be the person that made up the agenda and ran it by the tree of him. And, you know, there'd be a larger, I don't know what you want to call it, administrative role of the, you know, just a more active organizational role or, you know. I had the same the conversation. I had the same conversation. Um, this is Sue. I had the same conversation with Rich about how it changes the duties and of the being the volunteer chair versus the vice chair. Um, it doesn't really change what the volunteer position does. Um, he still would need help getting the agendas together. together. Right. And I haven't been soliciting agenda items, but I should be doing that. And if as a vice chair, that's what the, pers the person in that position would do that. Um, as well as, you know, try to foster communication and the other things that the person in the chair role does. Like, um, does that make sense? Yes. And I think in, if in that case, it would be more collaborative. You've got kind of two people that are, you know, driving the agenda or you know so there may be a few more checks and balances there i just this i'm just talking off the top of my head right now it yeah. just came into my head but you know i on one hand it feels like you know this lily's concerned about the diminishment of the independence and um i don't think we really have I, I'm, I'm a little confused as to what that independence was. It may be the way she was the chair, being the founding chair, um, took things more directly out into the community, but we are supposed to go through the mayor as the mayor's advisory committed commission. It is structured, so we're supposed to be going through the mayor as is, so. I don't see how it diminishes this too much, but. In that letter, she said, in my capacity as chair, I advocated in front of the council subcommittee on legislative matters to pull the brakes on the planning department's effort to fast track changes in the ordinance about the solar arrays. So that might not be possible for the tree warden to do. I don't know if he's in the government, can he then go and like, testify against some other branch of government, you know, officially? Or is that going to be, you know, a hindrance? Oh, that's a good, that's a good question. Could we appoint? I mean, that's a good point, Molly. We, um, I'm just trying to think, I don't know the inner, like, rules and stuff like that, but um, whenever Lily went to speak, though, we always, she always ran it by us and we said yes we want right. you to speak on our on our behalf you but know? imagine imagine if we had a um, a person who was a chair who wasn't really for that because he was right. in the pocket of the mayor or something you know um right yeah gotcha could the, gotcha could the vice chair be authorized by the commission to go talk to city council and to raise the concern right that was my next right that was my next comment if there was if there was a clear majority except the tree warden who didn't who wanted to put the brakes on the solar array yeah i don't know why we couldn't That's you true. know uh pass move make make a motion pass the motion that the vice chair goes to speak you know you know i i don't i don't know if you can jump over the the chair in that way exactly but you, you could certainly uh hand a written statement and ask that it be presented as this position of the tree commission. Mm -hmm. I mean, that you could do. I mean, you, well, they can't not do that. It's not, it's not an option to not do that. Why couldn't, well, why couldn't the vice chair do that in person? I think the vice chair could do it in person, but I think just put in a hierarchy, the vice chair couldn't choose to do that if the chair didn't want it. In other words, someone has to go to the meeting, right? You're saying they couldn't, the vice chair couldn't represent the committee? 
No, could, oh. but but I don't think they could represent the committee against the wish of rep. In other words, if the if the chair wanted to be there and represent the the, the chair has the prerogative. It's kind of the meaning of being the chair. Well, then I see that as a definite weakness. Yeah. No, or or vulnerability anyway. That just well, really brought well, up. The, the chair would be obligated, I believe, if we had a written statement or a statement to make, to, to present that. In other words, they couldn't. They couldn't represent the commission, whereas they're representing the commission and chair against the views of the majority. So they would be required to present. So the view of the majority, I believe. Or they can't just go and say, I'm the chair and this is what I think. It's like, I'm the chair and I hear, here's what the commission thinks. I can see how that could be a very hairy situation, though, on the commission. If you have, if there was an issue where the chair slash tree warden didn't right. want something and the rest of the commission did want it, yeah. our meetings would be really tense and there'd be a lot of, you know, inner conflict within the commission. Yeah. Which would be different than if, if the warden was um, like Rich is now, um, or it was anyway, whatever. Um, was not actually on the commission. The commission could speak as a body, even if the chair didn't, if even if the tree warden didn't approve. Right. So that I think that is a potential. Um, That's a good question. Well, except that we we still um, speak, speak as I a body. I think that one of. Yeah, we still speak as a body. It's just we have to speak, potentially speak through the chair, even if he doesn't yeah. agree with it. He still has to present. Well, the well, he wouldn't be a very he wouldn't be a very um, convincing if he wasn't in favor of the thing. He's he I say or she yeah. is not going to um, give a very convincing case for it. Well, well, that's why I said it would have to be in writing. I think mm. presented just the way Lily presented a letter to us. Now you know, present that. Uh huh. I think the biggest that. challenge we're going to have is going to be with the infill for instance, and that's something, and I think with all of these, these situations, I, where there's going to be conflict is what we're really going to have to do is be going to the city council is my understanding. And that's just the way it is. We are going to have to rally support for initiatives. I mean, we're, we're, we're in ex part of the executive branch so we we already are in some ways underneath the mayor or not i don't know we are and we're appointed well we're just yeah we're absolutely underneath the mayor because we can't act independently you know we are an advisory or in our mission or the way the charter is or whatever that word is for the document we are you know, an advisory body, we're appointed by the mayor and we're an advisory body to the mayor. Oh, did I lose you? No, we're here, we're here, we're just thinking. We're okay, 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 good, okay. I thought I lost you. No. Yeah. Well, has everyone had a chance to kind of talk through thoughts on this. I know I have more questions in a way. Um, basically, can we have a voice? Can the vice chair go to the council or how do we have a voice? Rich, Rich would probably know the answer to that. Yeah. And then- um, so should So does anyone know um, where this stands with the city council? Has anyone talked to them or or other people involved in the decision making? Who was it today, just at this meeting, said that this is going to go before the council on Thursday, which is tomorrow? That's what Lily told me. Because I called Lily when after she sent this and went through it. I had a few questions for clarification from from my understanding of it. And then that's what she told me it was 
She said Thursday. Wow. Let's see if it says anything on that document. I don't know. Administrative order. Where is that? Oh, here it is. Um, let's see. Do you have it handy? Yeah. Um, well, it doesn't say when it would go before. We'd have to look on the agenda for the city council. But his letter was written September 29th. Yeah. Which is a week ago. It's not that long ago. Huh. I mean, how one, often are the city council? How often are the city council meetings? Don't they meet every two weeks? I believe so. I'm not sure. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's every two weeks. Um, I could look up city council agenda. Thank you, Molly. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. I started to, but I'll let you. Um, October 8th, let's see. Special city council agenda. Well, let's just see what that is. Uh, Okay. Um, oh, this is different. This is about the election. Okay, so that's not it. Um, let's see. What else? Um, well, let me look up city council. Let's see. Is your website? Um, it's, I'm on the website, so don't duplicate what I'm doing. I'm wondering if we okay. should, um, as far as this issue goes, oh, look, it looks like they had their regular meeting on October 1st. They had a city council regular meeting on October 1st, so that means the next one would be two weeks from that. So it wouldn't be until the 15th. Is that a Thursday? Um, I assume, let's see. Um, yes, it is. Yep. Yeah, I think that's the- So that's what she meant, next Thursday. I think she means next Thursday. Not this Thursday, but yep. the one after. Yep, that's right. So, um, mm -hmm. For this meeting here, um, where are we at? You still have a couple questions, Sue, but maybe it's up to us as individuals to um, speak up to city council, you know, give them our opinion about what we think. I think we do have to form our individual opinions. I mean, we're, we're appointed, we're an advisory commi committee to the mayor and the mayor is, very strongly asserting this is what he wants to do. Um, we can go on record individually, I think. Um, certainly I have a few but, questions and I, I have a, a sense that um, Rich is day in day out very knowledgeable of what's going on with the trees. And in his current position over the years on the commission, he often doesn't have a chance even really to describe in detail what he's doing. And I, I have a lot of professional respect for him. And I think that this change does dignify his position as a professional. Hmm. There is that yeah. in my mind. So I'm inclined to 
I don't know. I I think that I, I, think, I that think that we people, should... people can express their individual opinion, but it can't be as a tree commissioner. I think we, as an individual tree commissioner, we we could call our individual. This I'm not entirely sure, but this is I think this is I'm not the best person for like. Robert's rules of order and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but um, I think that I think we have to make a decision, don't we? Don't we have to have a vote on this? And then no. individually? No one has asked person, us. No one has asked us as a commission to take a vote on oh. this. Right. Oh, okay. It's the mayor. So said, this is how the, the mayor is pushing that pushing for this. This is the initiative. Yeah. Lily is against it. And yeah. my, my hope was just to become as informed as possible about this. She also said that Alex and Rachel would be voting against it. At least. I don't know about the other ones. She said the progressive um, members of the council would be voting against it. That's what she said. In, in the email or the letter? When she spoke with me on the phone. Oh, okay. I oh, I didn't realize out. she'd spoken with her. Yeah, she called. I don't know if she called everybody. I didn't know about that. Yeah, she called no, me on the. She didn't. I called her. Uh huh. She didn't call me. Uh huh. But did she call the other commissioners before the meeting? Um. No. I don't know. I did not get a call. No. Okay. Yeah, maybe it was just me. I think she might have called David too. Oh. So she didn't call me, but I did call her. Mm -hmm. Well. So we're 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 between what the mayor wants and what Lily wants. So I would duck. <laughs> don't put that in the minutes. <laughs> don't put that in the minutes, okay? It just, I was just being trying to bring some levity. A little levity. <laughs> don't put that in the minutes. Okay? Yeah, that's why I was striving to really learn why the mayor um, finds this to be advantageous administratively. What are the advantages mm -hmm. of that for having a well-run city? And um, yeah. Lily's been really clear what she doesn't like about it. So that information is very readily available. But the other side, I did not have yeah. a lot of information on. He didn't I want to understand in it. The letter. He didn't say in the letter why he wanted it. He just said, because it's what the other two commissions have. But then Rich said, the reason for that is because of the membership of those commissions being counselors and you can't have the executive over the counselor, blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't apply to us. Mm -hmm. So. It, you know, that's not really a reason. I speak to Rich, but it was a while ago about this. And I think his feeling was that the mayor is trying to make order of the paperwork. And so he wants all the commissions to be on the same basis. Oh. So, it, which it may be um, some kind of simplification in terms of their sort of bureaucracy. I don't know. It seems like a weak reason for me yeah. to do it. I don't even know if what I'm saying is absolutely true, but I, yeah. I, I, I could see that having different commissions on different basis might be, um, working on different basis might be. Well, we're already different than the other ones because we don't have that same membership structure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like next, is he gonna wanna change that too? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. And I you mean have a counselor on our commission? Yeah to align it with the other commissions. I don't know. I, yeah. well, I, interesting. Know, I, know I don't know either. It's kind of the undercurrent of the letter is we've done this with the other commissions, so we're doing it to this commission. It's kind of what it said. I felt not explicit, but all right. The thing about this commission is it requires a little bit more expertise or um, experience with something to do with trees, at least so far, everybody who's been on the commission has some well, I don't know about David, but all of us are either arborists or biologists or on Tree Northampton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there, 
the the mayor wants to do this for some reasons, I guess. I I I don't know. Well, Sue, what the do you do about the rest of the agenda for this meeting? I think we have to table the rest of agenda. Rest of the agenda. It's it's gone quick, pretty late. So. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll um, see if we can gather up a meeting next week um, on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So I'll be asking, um, I'll be contacting Rich tomorrow morning after 9 a.m. and see if he's available for this coming Wednesday. And then com we'll communicate out to the group and see if that all can be done and if we have someone to take minutes. Um, if not, we'd have to table it for the further into the future, I think, seeing as some people are away. Mm -hmm. And as far as, so that's where we stand. Um, I suggest we make a motion to adjourn for today and come back again next week on Wednesday, if possible. Which will be the day before okay. the city council meeting. We would yeah, be meeting I mean, before then. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's the day before the council meeting, so it's kind of late. To, is there really, are there things on the agenda that can't wait until the next scheduled meeting? I, 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 let me get the agenda. Minutes. Not really. And David's not here for the commission charter thing. It's reports from the vice chair, the tree warden. We could approve the minutes from the last two meetings. We could do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, that's going to take a minute because I had to. Uh, Should we? I can find it. No. Beth, can we have you long enough to do this one item of business? Sure. Thank you. Okay. I, I just, I think that you also might have to. I don't know. Do you need to have a vote or something on tabling everything else before you? Oh, I just. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I move that we uh, tape. This is Jen. I move that we table the other agenda items we could not get to due to the power outage. And um, yeah, that's it. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. All in favor, roll call, Beth. Uh, Susan. In favor. Jen. Yes. Molly. Yes. David's not here. Um, Rob. Yes. So can we work on the uh, 916 minutes first? Yeah. We actually, Pat, the other ones on 9-2 were passed, except there was just a mistake in it about a date that was written on it, but we'd already actually passed it You're right. and read it. We could repass it, but not have to read it again. Yeah, the problem was that, that it, the date of the minutes that you were reviewing was listed incorrectly on the agenda. Right. That's right. Oh, okay. so we'll re reaffirm that then. Yeah. So, so I move that we reaffirm our approval of the minutes from nine was it nine what was the correct date two. sorry probably nine two yeah nine two uh i think there were some amendments but i don't remember them but i would do them and then yeah with amendments you should say with amendments i guess as amended as amended uh, as amended thank uh, you I, can i second as sure okay i second it uh, Susan. Roll call. I'm in Roll favor. <laughs> Jen. Yes. Molly. Yes. Rob. Yes. Okay, the minutes from September 2 have been officially accepted as amended. So now we're going to read the minutes from September 16th. Mm-hmm. They're pretty short. Great. 
So does everyone want to take a minute yep. or can we go right to corrections? That's the meeting I uh, missed. So I have to abstain. That's Jen. All right. So are we going right to um, corrections or are we taking a minute? Go ahead. Meeting? You have okay, a correction? Okay, uh, under ongoing project status. Um, I, I'm afraid that I'm probably the one who's not doesn't make things clear. So I'm gonna I will in the future try and speak more clearly. So the second point, all of the maintenance projects have been completed. Just many maintenance projects have been completed. They'll never all be completed. I'm yeah, I was surprised, but I you know. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there must be an endless list. <laughs> there is. There is. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, we're down at Spring Street and Spring Street Extension projects have been postponed until the drought, or, until, well, it's actually until leaf drop. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is that what it's called, leaf drop? Uh, or until the Jen, leaves have dropped. Is it a, is that a term? Leaf drop, Jen? Do you think that's a term? Yeah, okay. that's a term. That's a term. You can use that. Yep. Okay. And then um, where it says five honey locust trees in Florence that were planted are doing great. It's actually two of the five honey locust trees planted in Florence were doing great. Oh. Two of the five in Florence are doing great. Okay. Yeah. And just a little typo, half of the trees, next bullet down, by the old subway had to be cut down to- the Trees? Try and keep them alive? But it, it, No, I thought it was half of a tree. That was my impression. Oh, half computer. of the tree to try to keep it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yep, got it. Yes, good. Do we have a motion to accept the minutes as amended? I'll move. From September Molly. Molly moves. We have a second. Rob seconds it. Roll call, Beth. Susan. Yes, I accept, I, I vote yes. Jen. I have to abstain because I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. uh, Molly? Yes. Uh, Rob? Yes. The vote is in favor of the acceptance of the min meeting minutes. And now I think the next order of business is to table the rest of our agenda for today's meeting till the next scheduled meeting. Didn't, didn't we already vote on that? We did. You did that. Oh, no, I did that? Okay. Yeah, it um, passed with four now we just eyes. To adjourn. Thank you very much. So we need a motion to adjourn this meeting. Um, I move to adjourn the meeting. That was Jen. Jen. Thank you. And a second. Go yeah. for it, Rob. Rob seconds that. <laughs> seconds the adjournment. <laughs> All Susan, in favor? No, no, no. Nope, nope. Susan, how do you vote? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I Jen. vote in favor. Yes. Jen? Jen, yes. Uh, Molly? Yes. And Rob? Yes. Oh, that was a lot of hard work. <laughs> mm. Thank you guys for helping me get uh, the phone thing in. I'm glad we could do that. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming back in, Jen, because at least we got the minutes done and yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. A conversation. Yep. Yeah. Much appreciated. Thanks, if, everybody. If you... Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, Jen. Bye. Bye. Um, Sue, when you when you are you gonna talk to Marilyn before the next meeting? I think um, that's a good idea. Yeah, find out what happened today and also just let her know that we already did cover part of the agenda, but that we did talk about um the um, mayor's proposed changes, but I'll let her know. Table, yeah. Okay. I'll give her a call now and leave a message. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Molly. Sir.
，拜拜。